The title of the thesis presented here is Understanding Happiness by Using a Crowdsourced Database with Natural Language Processing. And we are going to talk about five sections of the thesis. In this thesis, there are three studies that delve into a database to know more about happiness. This crowdsourced database is called HappyDB, which consists of more than 100,000 descriptions of happy moments collected using Amazon's Mechanical Turk. Today, we focus on the first study where we conduct two classification tasks on the set database to learn two critical concepts of happiness, agency, and sociality. We apply the state-of-art word embedding algorithm BERT to transform all happy moments to context-sensitive representations and then feed them to a one-layer LSTM. We found that the proposed setup improves in performance compared to the previous works. Natural language processing has been used to decipher human language. Tasks in this term such as machine translation, speech recognition, and a product recommendation have vastly improved over the last few years. At the core of these language processing technologies are language models that transform massive amounts of textual information into multi-dimensional vector representations of words or sequences which are then used as input representations in complex artificial intelligence tasks. In this thesis, we compare diverse ways of converting texts into representations to learn two concepts of happiness, sociality and agency. Sociality here refers to feeling happy in the presence of others or alone while agency denotes whether the happy moment refers to the participant who reported it or to other people. For the data set we used, there is already a corpus called CLAFF corpus, where sociality and agency are annotated as an extension to the original HappyDB database, so we take advantage of this. The corpus information is as follows. There are 10,560 labeled training sets, labels that identify agency of the participant and the sociality of the events are attached. The table shows the components of the labeled training data. As to test set, 17,215 subsamples that contain also these labels are given, and the demographic information of authors are also given. The latter compresses learning settings incorporating autoencoders or k-means clustering. Various embedding algorithms were also employed in this task, including Word2Vec, GloV, Elmo, and word embeddings pre-trained on Wikitex 103 corpus. Our model is a LSTM with BERT. Why we use LSTM? The reasons are manifold. Neural networks are great techniques and have brought a breakthrough in applications like image recognition. However, there are two limitations that obstruct their performance in sequential data such as time series and textual data. First, in order for a neural network to process data, these data points need to be of fixated length while in real life sentences are mostly of different lengths. Compressing pre-trained vectors or padding them into a single representation would risk loss of information. Also, there is no memory associated with these neural network models. Accordingly, neural networks are not a supreme option for processing sequential data. That is where recurrent neural network comes in. Recurrent neural networks address the set problem by taking in inputs of various lengths and introduce a hidden cell serving as a kind of memory. Then, LSTM, one variant of RNN, extends the idea by including a short-term component and also a long-term memory component while retaining the characteristics of variant length input. Therefore, LSTM is a powerful tool for sequential data. There is dependence of one word on the others that have preceded it. 
Since invented, LSTN has documented outstanding performance in tasks such as text generation, text synthesis, and sentiment analysis, to name a few. In this slide, we show the configuration of LSTM we have trialed. In order to achieve a better outcome, we tried the mini batch gradient descent and iterated batch size in steps of 32, 64, 128, and 256. We experimented with both one layer LSTM and two layers. However, adding up an extra layer consumes more. Early stopping is utilized to monitor whether there are signs of overfitting. If so, in order to deal with it, orthogonal initializer is used with a gain of 1.0. We also add a dropout layer with dropout rate being 0.2. Other methods of re reducing overfitting have been experimented, but no increase in accuracy was witnessed, so we will skip that part due to time constraints. We have put a hyperparameters value that contributes to the best performer in both in both tasks. For the word embedding algorithms, we experiment with BERT and also GLOVE. Here we give a detailed explanation of BERT since it's the highlight of this thesis. There are 24 types of BERT models listed online, including BERT Tiny, BERT Small, and etc. We use the BERT base model, uncased 12 layer transformer, 768 dimensions, 12 heads, 110 M parameters. Max sequence length is set at 128, padding and truncating scales are involved in fixating the length of each description to 128. Therefore, for each input, BERT outputs a tensor of shape 128,768 with one vector per token. Out of 12 layers, we summed the last four layers as a pooling strategy to obtain a fixated representation for each happy mode description. We also developed eight baseline models by applying traditional machine learning algorithms, including support vector machine, random forest, logistic regression, and the naive base. Each of them is implemented with two sets of word embedding algorithms, and they are back of words and back of words with the TFIDF transformation. In this slide, we show the result. Compared to other models, the linear SVM with both as the word representation method performs well on first task, achieving a score of 19.49% in terms of classification on agency. Logistic regression outperforms others, reaching 80.65% accuracy. As the labels of agency are less balanced, most models perform less satisfyingly in this task. However, random forest shows a different pattern where its score is higher in the agency classification than that in the sociality classification. The upset, above set are the performance of the baseline models. How about the other three models we used? We used three sets of evaluation methods, accuracy, area under the curve, and F1 score to compare three models, the ELMO, GLOVI, and BERT trend models on these two tasks of classification. Note that we retrieved the accuracy and F1 score of the ELMO-based model from the publication as it was the best performing in the previously stated CLEFF competition. The results presented here suggested that the proposed model with BERT outstrips the other two in both tasks and in all evaluation methods. It achieves 86.42% accuracy, 90.42% F1 score, and 91.41% area under curve in the agency classification task. As to the sociality task, as the samples are more balanced, the results are better. Our model with BERT hit 97.11% in area under curve. Its F1 score is also the highest, boasting 93.49%. The model also achieved 93% in accuracy, outperforming the previously best performer.